Welcome to Spirit School. My name is Danielle Serenk, also known as the Squamish Medium. I am the host of your Spirit School, where I will share all the lessons and learnings that I have uncovered through my intuitive development and mediumship development journey. I am a professional psychic and medium and intuitive teacher and mentor, and I look forward to walking alongside you on this journey. Everyone and welcome to the Spirit Room. Um, here with Danielle Serenk, Squamish Medium, and her podcast, The Spirit School. Um, we are doing a joint episode, which is exciting. Um, so it's good to be back together and being able to have a chance to chat again. So, um, how's it going? How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. This is exciting. I know that we really wanted to try to do something somewhat regular for both of our podcasts. And so I'm really excited. We come together. We're going to have a very fun conversation on a very uh, popular topic tonight, I suppose. But I've been doing great. Thank you. Good. Good. Well, and I think, you know, what I've noticed too is it's cool. It's cool to do, um, you know, our, our own thing separately. But I totally miss the interaction and the uh, the energy together, you know, so it's really, really nice to have that for for us for today. So it's going to be good. For sure. I know I've missed you so much too. We got to talk all the time, but at least we still keep in touch and you're still my mediumship bestie. <laughs> my yes. closest confidant in the side of, you know, the world. And so I, yeah, I'm just like really excited that we can make space and time for each other. Definitely. Definitely. And I mean, this is a great topic. I think that we're both going to have lots to say um so i don't know i was thinking to start off with the difference between a skeptic and a cynic um because i think there is a difference um from my experience i think a healthy amount of skepticism is good um because without it there's no discernment and um you you want to be able to have somebody coming to you that's going to think for themselves um and and be able to um you know be able to do that i think that's important um but a cynic i think a cynic is someone who literally has already made up their mind that this is all um you know this is all scam and that it's not real, or that we're all people that are preying on, you know, preying on uh, people who are vulnerable, or people who are grieving, you know, that kind of thing. And they make it their mission in life to really disprove it and to take people down, you know, like tear people apart. So I mean, I think I've I've, I've experienced both types I've experienced skeptics and cynics. But what about you? I think that's a really cool way to start. And I remember back in the day when I was obviously obsessed with Sylvia Brown, I remember there were websites dedicated to debunking her. Right. Like complete websites, like people full-time job on this, like let's debunk her. And it was crazy. So yeah, I would definitely say that there's a big difference between cynic and skeptic. And my biggest example of a skeptic was my husband, but now I'm like, he might actually borderline the cynic. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right so what's his take like what does he feel about it uh he thinks you're worm meat when you die <laughs> like literally <laughs> he thinks what? you're worm meat when you die he just thinks you go in the ground you do okay. the shows, you, you enter the nothingness um it's fascinating actually and he he's never even come around to having like a full discussion with me on it but I remember when I first came out to him as a medium after we had our first baby and he looked at me square in the face. He said, you better not quit your job for this. <laughs> Fast forward a couple of years and here we are. I know. Well, he was the one who told me to quit my job for this after almost seven years. And uh, yeah, you know, he just, he just doesn't believe it. He thinks that it's like, he, he knows that I'm helping people. Like he's seen people's reactions to me when we're out and about. And he was like, oh, wow, you must have like really made an impact on them. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, what I do is kind of cool. It's fun. And he's just never been curious enough to like ask me about it. Once in a while, he will say, how are your readings today? And I will just say they are wonderful. Thank you. So it's like he tries to be so supportive, but he just doesn't believe in the afterlife. And he doesn't believe in you know, angels or guides or anything like that. He just doesn't even contemplate these kind of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fascinating. It is. I mean, and it's so, it's so interesting too, because 
I find most people, most people that I know that are mediums, um, they all, they all have someone, at least one person in their life or their family that really, really just doesn't, they don't get it, you know, at least one person. Um, for me, my parents, when I started to tell them, like, this is what I'm doing and this is like what I'm doing for work. Um, my parents didn't even know the definition of a reading. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't know what that meant. My mom was like, what do you mean a reading? Like, what is, what are you doing? Um, so I had to explain it. Um, and she has come around now, like it took years, but she did come to one of my dems that I did before. And, um, she, she, I could tell she was super affected by it. And she told me afterwards she had to see it in order to understand it. Um, and it really, it really touched her. And she was really, like she said, she was quite proud of me for it. And that would meant a ton because I never thought I would get that. Not that I, not that I didn't feel supported. Like I felt she wanted to support me, but I just never felt like she really understood exactly what she was supporting, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and then with my dad, he's not, he, I don't think he, I don't still don't think he really knows what it is exactly that I am doing. Um, so there's, I think on his part, he's got a lot of grief and I think it's just really hard for him to even talk about an afterlife. You know, I think that's hard for him. Um, yeah, so I get that. And I think my brother just thought that I was going into some weird like cult type thing. Like I think that's what he kind of thought. So he doesn't ask me ever. Like he does not ask me about my job and it's not like a negative. It's just like he, I don't think it occurs to him that it's something to talk like to even talk about so it's interesting my parents have always been so supportive I remember me my dad when I was a teenager we used to watch John Edwards on TV together like we Mm -hmm. loved it me and my dad went to Sylvia Brown front row when I was 17 like he was always like my go-to person when it came to like the mediumship stuff but I don't talk to him about it as much because he's a um, self-realization fellowship follower and like he just thinks these conversations are like too sacred to share so I don't really talk too much about the details but my parents are so supportive but I remember sitting in the driveway telling my parents last year when I resigned from my job my dad looked at me he's like we're gonna be homeless (laughs) I was like like, no I can sustain you know the house like doing this work and I think that's what he was more skeptical about was that I gave up a really flourishing career in the corporate world to pursue my passion full time and they've seen it work out so they're very supportive but it was nice having them there and having my husband as a skeptic you know it's really kept me grounded in a lot of ways too and Mm -hmm. that's been helpful and I get a lot of questions from people I do because I'm very open about it on the podcast about my husband being very skeptical about this work and you know I people ask me like how do you manage the marriage like if you guys don't have this in common like we have a lot of other things in common but my husband like even though he doesn't believe he wants me happy, he wants the best for me. And he sees the transformation I've made as a person stepping onto this path and stepping into this work. And he sees how happy I am. And so I've never over the seven years tried to convince him of any of this. Mm -hmm. I've never shamed him. I've never pushed anything down his throat at all. I've just kept it completely separate in our marriage from the kids and from our home. And we both have like, you know, a love for motorsports and um, other connections with one another. And I feel like him just seeing me kind of step into this work and like being so happy and joyful, he's kind of come around to it a little bit more. So it's just kind of like the leading by example, more than trying to convince someone else of anything. It's a good point because I don't think that it's our job um, or our obligation to convert anybody. You know, I think that's the beautiful thing about spirituality or even spiritualism. You know, if you were looking at the actual religion, you know, of spiritualism, um, we're not looking to go out and to like, you know, like change someone's mind, prove it to them so that they can be like us. You know, it's more like, this is our truth. This is what we're sharing. This is what we're bringing to the world. Um, It's there if and when somebody is ready, you know, and it certainly isn't um, everyone's belief, you know, and I think as long as there's a healthy respect, you know, my feeling is like, I've had many, like many religious people, um, approach me, message me, 
telling me that I'm going to hell, telling me that I'm like, you know, just like, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm preying upon the weak, all kinds of things like that. And in the beginning, I really, really felt insulted and actually really, really angry because I was like, who are you to tell me what to believe and what to do? This is my vocation. This is like a this is who I am. This You're not just attacking like what I'm doing. You're attacking essentially who I am as a person and what I believe. Um, it's so sacred to me and it's so personal. But I recognize now that like, you know, it, it's really not like I would, I would, you know, email back and be like, this is why I believe what I believe. And I would try to explain. And now I realize like <laughs> there's no, there's really no point in that yeah. first. But also, it's, it's like, as long as there's a respect, you know, I respect everyone else's right to believe what they believe, their religious, you know, the religious beliefs, the religious practices, as long as you're not harming anyone else, I feel like do what you want, believe what you want, um, and follow, you know, what feels true and what feels right to you. Mm. Um, but I would expect that in return, you know, I expect that people would also respect what we believe. Yeah. You know, I had an email like that last week. It was my first time getting email like that from an old mentor. And she, she sent me this email that basically said in summary, she was like, you know, I'm just praying and hoping that you didn't go into this work full time. (laughs) It was just like the most retro mercury retrograde ish thing I've ever received. Comforting, Comforting. Right. And I'm just like, okay, but you know, my luck with mentors. So it was like, it was hilarious, but I I felt like so judged in that moment because she's a big skeptic of the work now. Right. And it was like, it was fascinating. So yeah, that's the only, I haven't gotten those emails yet about where I'm going, <laughs> but yeah. I'm sure they'll come one day and I will probably not respond to them. Yeah. But we'll get into that vibration for sure. One of the most skeptical comments I get day to day, I would say, and I don't get it every day, obviously, but those little comments about, well, didn't you know that? Yes. You get those? I get that or I get, um, this is kind of funny, but people will send me like an email transfer and they won't send me the password. <laughs> and then they'll go, and when I ask, they're like, oh, I thought you were psychic. Oh, thought, God. And I'm like, really? Like, do you want me to tune in? Like, sure. Like, I guess so. But like, it's kind of like ridiculous. <laughs> like, I kind of feel it's kind of um, rude. <laughs> It is rude and it just like sets the vibe way off, right? Yeah, it's just like my thing is like when somebody sets out to test you in a way that's very malicious, and I'm not saying that is, I think that's just kind of funny. I think people are just being funny, but like um, I've had people who have purposely, I know that they've purposely come to test me, to trip me up. I've had people that have lied to me about the information. Like I'll give them a piece of information. Even if it isn't correct, they'll say, yep. And they'll get me to keep going. Like I've had a situation like that. Why Um, would someone do that? I, I have, I mean, that was probably my most triggering. I was in a group reading and this one lady, I think I may have talked about it before, but she basically came with the intent to mess me up like she wanted me to fail she wanted to prove that the whole thing was just like garbage and the thing is like everybody else in the group was getting really great readings everyone was like yes yes it was good it was it was an amazing kind of group of people um but when it came to her she was purposely lying and saying answers that weren't true I would give her a piece of information it was correct and she would say no and her friend beside her was looking at her like confused Mm -hmm. and then finally said um and kind of spoke up for her and said uh you do have like you do have two kids you know like she kind of like she she kind of told on her (laughs) and and I was like uh and what did she say to me I think she said something like well if you're if you're for real wouldn't you have already known that wouldn't you have known that I was lying to you and it just enraged me. And I don't know where this came from because I'm not the kind of person who usually is like that firm when it comes to like, I'm pretty like fairly even keeled and gentle for the most part. But like in that moment, I feel like it was spirit. Something came through me and I was like, and now your reading is done. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm moving on. And I said, I'm, I don't work this way and I don't appreciate it. And I just kept going. Okay. And I shocked myself, right? I was like, oh, who's this? Because it felt very, like, bitchy. But 
I just felt like it was disrespect. So if there's going to be a disrespect, I'm not doing it. Um, and I think people do it because it feeds their ego. It makes them feel smarter or, you know, like they've pulled one over on you, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know why you would pay money to see someone and waste their time. Yeah. You know, it reminds me. So you have to Google this after if you haven't seen it. Maybe we'll throw it in the show notes. But Teresa Caputo went on Jimmy Kimmel. Mm. And he does not believe in this shit at all. It reminds me of kind of like what he was doing to her on his show. It was really? it was so bad. I was just like, oh, my God, if I ever make it, I'm never going on Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny that, um, you know, he, it reminds me of what he would do, right, in, in that situation, just try to, like, poke fun. And it, I think you would get so angry because it's like you can you hold this work so high and then somebody's just treating it like it's like a circus show. It's yeah. just so offensive. Like, yeah, that's what it is, too. You know, I think people don't understand the time and the effort and the energy that it takes to even do this in the first place. Mm. But then the courage that it takes to put yourself out there and how much we, and I know it's true for me and you at least, we agonize sometimes over, was this good enough? Was this enough? Was this, was that evidence, you know, as good as it could have been? Did I, I, you know, did I, did I prove this without, you know, like completely, do they, do they get it? You know, is this healing for them? There's so many like so many wants and and wishes that we have for this work and the the effect that it's going to have you know and I think that when someone um doesn't take it seriously that is offensive you know I and it doesn't happen often but it has you know and I think Mm -hmm. the more people you reach the more opportunity there is for that to kind of be put on your path um and I think I've gotten better with it but um yeah, it's really, it's hard because you're also so open and so vulnerable in that energy. You're opening yourself up so wide. And so if someone's coming in with this intention, um, it, it can affect you. You know, it can really, really affect you. Yeah. I, w- I would put that girl in the cynic pile. Yes. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. And you know, I, I, cause I wanted to come up with a few examples of what this looks like in a reading and how much skepticism for me, I don't, I was curious if you experienced the same thing, but there's two examples that I have of, as of the, probably the, within the past year where I had people who are skeptic, uh, ste- skeptical booking a reading and those readings didn't go very well. No. And I didn't realize how skeptical they were till the end or after the reading. But I remember them leaving. I'm like, why was that reading such a slog? It's like, there was no flow like it was like literally like pulling teeth trying to get some information for them and then after the fact it was revealed that they were skeptical and I was like oh, okay right and so it made me actually realize how much skepticism can actually like askew the energy of a reading 100% I believe this completely and I know there's different there's different ideas about this. You know, I've had, I know um, uh, someone, an English medium that was saying, I don't know when this was a while ago, I caught some part of a, a discussion or a talk that was on YouTube or something. Um, and he was talking about how it doesn't matter who you read for, you should be able to produce the same results for every single person and all this stuff, right? And I was like, well, maybe that's your opinion, you know, and that's your experience. My experience being in a very empathic medium um, is that you can you can read for two people same day. Mm-hmm. One can go absolutely amazingly. You can be getting names left, right, and center. They'll be crying. You'll be like giving each other a hug after they go and feel like you've just like touched their soul. And it's the most amazing thing in the world. Mm -hmm. You can then have a reading an hour later with somebody who is skeptical, who isn't sure if they even believe, isn't sure if they want to do this, is afraid that you're going to find out their deep, dark secret. Who knows? There's all kinds of things that can cause that, you know, that, that sort of energy um, barrier. Um, and it can go really bad. It could be that it feels like it's, like you said, like you're like, like trudging through the mud, just trying to get to the same place that was so simple with the other person. And I feel confident in saying that, that it does depend a lot on the sitter because oh. of the volume of readings that I've done now. 
I see it very clearly, you know, and it's like, if you're open, like the world is your oyster, the sky's the limit, we can go anywhere with it. It's so exciting. But then when there is a skeptical person, you do have to work a lot harder just for the minimum result. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would say to people, and I, I don't feel bad saying it, I say, this reading has little to do with how good I am or how like not good I am. This has to do with like, how willing are you to be open to this and work with me and participate? If you're willing, like this is your reading, let's like, I'll give it my all spirit will give their all, but you also have to take responsibility. And I think that's helpful. You know, at least people get it that they can't just not participate and expect the world, you know? Yeah, I agree. I've, I've had the same thoughts. And I remember when we were at the retreat with Tony at Loon Lake, um, 2016, and he, I mean, he's hilarious, right? And he was telling us the example about this lady who got one of a reading in a group and she went up to him saying, well, that wasn't like that great. And he was like, well, that's your fault, honey. <laughs> and he was really trying to tell us about how, you know, a lot of the energy of a reading does depend on the sitter and how they show up and us as readers, I suppose, and how we can prepare them to show up for like the best uh, possible session. But I do feel that the more and more I do readings now, I'm like, you know, spirit's always there. I always show up as my best self because that's the integrity in which I do this work. Like the only real wild card energetically is the sitter. Yeah, it is. It is. And, you know, I, I do think that um, it's only ever as good as the sitter allows it to be. And as good as we allow ourselves to be in that, we allow ourselves to be free within it, you know, that we're not putting rigid expectations on ourselves, that we're, we're giving ourselves permission to really be open to the possibilities, to allow it to be creative and different and unique and, you know, each time, you know, so that's, that's on us. Um, and to do it, like you said, to show up with the best of intentions. But um, my friend Ashley, who does this work, she said that basically what she tells herself is after every single reading, it doesn't matter if it's a reading, an inspirational talk, whatever, she'll say, I've done my best mm -hmm. and it's good enough. Yeah. And that's all you can really do. Yeah, I started saying that last year after my readings because, like, as you know, we, we talk a lot about our, our like, us as mediums. We, we confide in each other. And I used to do, like, this postmortem, like, wrap-up of the reading and, like, go way into it and scrutinize it, even if it was, like, good. And so I started saying that, too, last year. I was like, you know what? I did the best I could. I hope I made the world of spirit proud. And I let it go. And I stopped thinking about my readings after. <laughs> Well, you can drive yourself literally crazy. Like I believe that lots of mediums become very neurotic from doing this work because it's like you can get into such a place of, and it's it's in in it's a, you're coming by it honestly. You it's it's out of a need to want to do such good work and to be of value and to be of service. So it's not a bad thing, but it can be detrimental to your own mental health. Mm. if you know if you allow it to control you and overwhelm you um so no I totally get that and I I sort of look at it that way too it, it's going to be what it's going to be you know and some you're going to be able to reach and it's just going to be like you know that beautiful feeling and then other times it's got to be what it is and it's like you know have I done my best yes you know and I can we can both say that each and every time we're doing our absolute best we can um, with what we're given, what's available to us in that moment energetically. So I've had, have you ever had this where people um, come and they ha they're wanting to hear from spirit and they've made like a secret password with them before right. they pass? That was one of the examples I was going to talk about. I, I, I've done a reading for a family to, like for a few years, right? They're compassion readings. I don't charge anything. And um, I read for the family because they had a very tragic loss every year. And just one member of the family is, is like more skeptical than the rest. And like I was able to bring through a ton of evidence. And at the end, they said, well, the one person said to me, you know, I just, I still, it's, and this is like the third year in a row. Okay. <laughs> um, they're like, the one person was like, I still don't believe this because you didn't talk about the hair tie. I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, well, you needed to talk about the hair tie for me to like, really believe you're connecting with her. I'm like, I just talked for 45 minutes 
like almost all evidence and messages and just that one thing that they wanted to hear, like made them not believe the reading. I'm like, I would never get that. It was like the most random thing. I'm like, I would never get that. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's sometimes a lack of understanding and a lack of knowledge on their part about how this actually works. Um, you know, and I think it's so sad. It makes me sad when that happens because I'm like, you feel so defeated. You feel deflated. Like, I just spent all this time and energy really bringing you beautiful information, but it's not what you wanted, so you you reject it. You know, I just think that the spirit person must also feel frustrated at that point, you know? Yeah. But, what, you um, what experiences you had? Like, what does that do for your readings? Like, it just makes you feel like, oh, like, it's just, it's a, it's like a kick in the gut. It makes me feel like it's hard to deal with that. Um, I had one lady early on in my professional readings where she was referred to from, to me by a client who was super happy, who had this amazing experience. Her mom came through and it was wonderful. So she referred this lady, the lady comes and her father in spirit came through. And I, I did feel like it was like everything I said, it would take her like a minute to reply yes or no. Do you know when people are just really slow because they're like thinking about if they're going to say yes or no, like they're really dissecting everything that you're saying. Yeah. And it becomes very difficult to stay in your flow because they're not responding, right? So you've got to keep that energy and it's like, just want them to say yes or no. <laughs> anyway, she was taking forever and it was a kind of like awkward and I didn't feel super connected to her. Um, but I did feel her father there wanting to communicate. So I kept going and um, she stopped me at one point and she's like, um, I don't believe this is my father. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, and she's like, yeah, because if it's really him, we would have so many other things to discuss than the things that you're talking about. Mm. And I'm like, well, yes, but I'm trying to explain the process where we have to, I, to get enough information. You have to say yes or no. Once you believe and know this is your father, all of a sudden this can open up and we can get there. You know, we can get to that point, but you know, she wasn't getting it. And I was so, I think, I don't know, inexperienced at that time that I didn't have the, the, I don't think the energy behind my words was confident enough. I think she was a super um, assertive person Mm -hmm. and very, very kind of tough energy. And so I don't think she really, I think she thought I was giving her like a cop out. Like, I think she thought I was just making up an excuse why, like, it, you know, why, why it wasn't what she thought it was supposed to be when really I was just trying to tell her like, Oh, don't give up. Like, let's just like, like work together, you know? Um, and it was difficult. I spent probably an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, like really trying to essentially convince her looking back. I wouldn't have like, if it happened now and I had that same experience, I would say, okay, well, I think even before she said anything, I probably would have stopped it and said, I don't think this is working. You know, I would have, I would have had the guts to do that. Um, but not then, you know, then I was very, very much feeling like I had to, I was obligated to read for every single person and make them, you know, make them believe and have them, you know, love the experience and everything. And, um, it just, it crushes your confidence, you know, when that happens, especially early on. Um, but it was also, it was mostly my feeling of like, oh, but I felt him there. I wanted him to have that experience with her and I wanted her to feel some healing. Um, but I talked to the lady that referred to her. We actually ended up becoming friends and she said, oh, well, she, she wondered if that might happen. So I think sometimes people do know that they're sending you a toughie, <laughs> but, um, and it's fine. You know, I welcome people having a healthy skepticism, you know, of course, like you don't want to believe everything blindly with no evidence. You know, you do, that's necessary. We do have this, um, requirement. We have to be evidential for sure. But I, I think that you also have to have respect for the process as well. Yeah. Do you find, because I I think you do too, but I I get a lot of male clients and I notice a difference in the energy of male and female clients. Um, Like almost all the males who come to me and I even have two tomorrow. Like I do, I do get a lot of male clients, but they're a little bit more prove me than my female clients. (laughs) 
Do you experience that? I used to have a phobia. Okay. I had to work through this because I had experiences with men that it like scarred me for life. Like I just like couldn't I just, I had very difficult male clients for like a while. There mm. was like a string of them. And I was like, I do not even like reading for men. You know, like it was really tough. And then I realized I'm like, listen, no, it's just got to work with them in a little bit different way. Um, and now I find it's mostly women. I can't even remember last time I had a male client. Mom, well, maybe groups, sometimes groups, husbands and stuff. Um, but I find that once I got my confidence and I stepped more fully into my power, all of a sudden I wasn't getting difficult men anymore. Yeah, I definitely think our energy attracts our clients without a doubt. Yeah, um, yeah I love that. But yeah, I, I do work with a lot of men. And what I find is that the men are definitely more prove me than the women. Like the yeah. women, you could tap into even psychic right away before the mediumship comes through. You kind of talk about like how they're feeling. With men, it's like very different. They won't even give you an inch until you like prove things to them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've had that experience for sure. Um, I have men that are so freaked out when their wives like want to have a group reading at, at their house and they'll be like, I'll come in and I'll be like, okay, and explain the process. And then I'll be like, any questions? And the husband is like, um, when you're done, where do the spirits go? <laughs> then, like, they're yours. They'll stay with you. They're here anyway. Like, it's not like I'm like bringing them with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're bringing your spirits, buddy. <laughs> and I'm like, but don't worry. The rent, like your your friends that came over, the you know, the spirits go with them. You know, they're, they're it's not going to hang around your house. Like that's not that's not a fear. But yeah, it's interesting. Lots of lots of husbands are worried about that. It's so funny. I had a male client and this was such a funny situation for me. It was such a learning curve, like really standing in my power and like honoring spirits messages because I had this girl who was on the docket, but I guess she couldn't make it. So she sent her dad. Oh, so he didn't even know he was going to get a reading. He'd never had one before. He just showed up at my door. I'm like, Hey, all right, come in, sir. And what shows up first for him, but two angels. <laughs> I'm like, really? You're going to get me to talk about angels? I'm like, sir, you know, do you believe in angels? He's like, well, I'm, I'm kind of open to anything, I suppose. And they came through some beautiful evidence and he was crying within 10 minutes and we're really good friends now. I love that guy. And it was a really kind of like phenomenal experience because me a couple of years ago would have been like, okay, this guy is not going to be into angels. Like, why are the angels coming through first? <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah. And I think, you know, we're brought sometimes those experiences precisely for that reason. You know, for us, it's not even about really that person's reading. It's more like, here you go. Here's a challenge. What are you going to do with it? You know? Um, and I think there's a difference, you know, some people might come and they could be a bit skeptical, but you, they have a healthy respect for you or for the work. So there's always a way to find, you might stumble a bit in the first few minutes, but you'll find that groove. You'll find your way with them. Um, especially if there's a need for it, you know, if there's a need, you know, a way will be made, but when someone doesn't respect it or you or your time, and they're just there for whatever ego reason, that's when I would say, don't let, let's not, you know, in that case, like here, you know, here's your money. Um, we're good. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the medium for you, whatever, you know, but just not torturing ourselves, not pushing ourselves, forcing ourselves to go through with something that's not, um, not healthy. Yeah. So have you ever entered a reading skeptical yourself? Like I had an experience recently where I hired a pet psychic mm -hmm. and I was very, because my cat's like dying, some, something mysterious they can't figure out. And it's, it's been really disturbing for the past two years on how to like navigate this. So I had somebody refer like a pet psychic and like, of course I believe in this stuff, but she was really pricey. Like it was like 350 us for 30 minutes. Right. Not really well known, I suppose. I'm not in the animal psychic yeah. world, really. But um, 
it was really bad. And I had a feeling because I kind of went in skeptical. Like, I wonder what she could say about my cat that would be evidential. And do you want to hear this? Actually, this is kind of off topic, but on topic. So I booked this session, pay the money, and then I get an intake form that asks, what's your pet's name? What's wrong with them? What's the name and description of everybody in their life? What do they like to do? Like basically everything that I would hope that they would bring through some, for some evidence. Uh And so I went into that reading very skeptical, right? Because doing this work, I'm like, how would you even have a clear channel knowing all this about your client before? And it it was really bad. (laughs) But I I wonder, I'm like, was it bad? Because I came in skeptical. (laughs) No, I, I think in this case, it was more so your intuition was like, "Mm, this person may not be um, like what you're looking for. Um, And then basically that's what happened, you know, but I don't know if it was because you were skeptical. Um, But yeah, that's too bad because that's sort of like a real disappointment. What was a 30 minute reading? She was 10 minutes late and she spent the first 10 minutes reading my intake form. I was like, okay, you're not going to read it. Unbound. Okay. And then she was like, your cat likes being by the curtains. I'm like, I don't have curtains. I actually don't know many people under 50 that do have curtains. <laughs> like, right. But she was like, no, your cat's talking about the curtains. And she just like hung on these curtains for 10 minutes. So by that time, like the reading's over. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, bye. <laughs> How did she respond to your nose? Like, did she, what did she? Oh, she just went back into this, this chat with the cat. Right. And she's like, you're not talking to your cat. Right. I'm like, no, I don't even know where my cat is. And she's like, okay. Cause that can back up the energy. So she's saying, are you sure it's like the kitchen? Like she's talking to the cat and she's like, nope, he likes the room of the curtains. I'm like, we have no curtains here. I have a million windows, but they all have blinds, no curtains. I was like, we can move past the curtains because yeah, we could, yeah. he wouldn't let go of the curtains. I was like, okay, I have a dying cat here. I'm looking for like, and then her advice to me was just pretend like he's not sick. Oh, Um, okay. (laughs) And then some sort of like vitamin drop to give him. And yeah, it was, it was a bad situation. It was last month actually that happened. But other people that you trust referred her? I had one of my friends that had a reading with her and she said it was like the best thing in the world. But I have a feeling that this lady kind of told her everything she wanted to hear. Mm. But because you have the intake form, right? Of everything that's that going doesn't on. fit well with me to have that information because then you're not working psychically if you already have all that information in your logical mind. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even look at the names of the people. I, like, I only know because no. I have two guys tomorrow because I looked at my calendar. I'm like, okay, what time am I working tomorrow? Like, I really want to know anything about my clients at all. No. The worst, the worst is when they tell you when they message and they're like, my father just passed away and I really, really want to connect with him. I'm like, ah, I'm like, no, stop, don't. I don't want to hear it. Like, just, I, just, it's so much better. It's so much better if you know absolutely nothing. Um. That's too bad. I'm sorry you had that experience, but I almost wonder too, like, I feel she should have, if you said no, no, no enough times that she should have been like, um, I'm not connecting properly for you. Like, here's your refund. Like to me, that's the only ethical thing to do in that case. Well, you would think so. Right. And I mean, the second I got the email, it's like, there are no refunds and here's your intake form. I was like, okay. And like she's really well known. Like I didn't actually realize how like famous she was, but I guess at that price tag she would be, right? But it was like I mean Canadian, it was like four fifty for thirty minutes. Yeah, like, that's the most I've ever spent on a reading. It's a significant investment, you know. But that's too bad. I don't know. That's so weird to me. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess it happens. But yeah, it is. It is interesting. I don't know. I don't know how much. I mean, it's hard to say. But I don't yeah, think you're, you're I don't listening, listening, just hit me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. Well, that was the only time I really kind of went into a reading kind of skeptical myself. Yeah. And of course, being a reader, like I felt bad. Like, have you ever entered a reading where you're like, I don't know what's going on here? <laughs> I've had some weird, like I've had some weird things said to me, like no doubt. But I always feel like I'm a medium's medium. Like I'm pretty like open 
And I will, like, even if someone tells me something and I'm like, "Mm," I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Like, I'll tell them honestly, like, no, or "Mm, don't think so. But I'll be like, I will, I'll definitely keep it in mind. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll try to support them as much as I can, you know? So I've never, no, I never walk away. And if something doesn't resonate, I'm always just like, well, that's not for me, you know, like, whatever. Um, cause I always come from this place, like, yeah, people are trying their best. But, um, I have had, yeah, I've had a few readers at times that have said weird things to me that I've just been like, okay, I don't know how to, I did feel guilty for just being like, no because they seem so sure yeah I found like the ones that were wrong the ones that were so sure of themselves like they were so adamant about certain things and I'm like oh I don't know where that's coming from so yeah but I I can't say I've ever been no I've never been skeptical I think just careful I think now to allow someone to read me would be rare just because I just don't I don't know. I just don't feel like as open to it as I used to be. Like when I was first embarking upon all this, I wanted so much, like, tell me, like, I just wanted everyone to tell me everything. And I wanted it, you know, to know. And then now I'm like, uh, unless there's like a real, if I'm, unless I'm like lost or I'm in like a real place of like despair, then some inspiration I can gain from it. But I kind of don't, I don't know. I kind of don't feel the same need for it. I don't get medium to readings anymore. And really, I, I haven't really for a long time. Like I, I got one from Aboriginal medium, Sean Leonard, because I was fascinated with him. And it was the best reading of my life without a doubt. But I am obsessed with getting astrology readings. Like mm-hmm. I love, I get, I get a couple a year. I just love astrology readings. And think, yeah. You like him too. I think that, it's really, really interesting and it's fascinating. And because it's something that I don't know a ton about, it's super interesting. Yeah, I had a, I got one. I don't know if you've seen on Instagram. There's a guy, his name's Dr. Lennox something, but he's the red robe astrologer. So he just like wakes up, he has his red silk robe and he gives you like, oh, yes. I, did see something. I did see something about him. Okay, I had a meeting with him two weeks ago. It was phenomenal. He's so funny and he is so, he's just like he is on Instagram. It was probably one of my favorite astrology readings, other than the ones I get from Lindsay. And I just like, I'm like, I'm going to get a reading with you every year because it's just like so much fun. I leave so energized. And with astrology, it's cool because they look at like the transit. So they could look at, you know, every year in your birthday getting one. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, what, and it's not psychically predicting things like no. next year you're going to switch jobs. It's like, they're looking at, you know, maybe stay at home November 13th. <laughs> maybe don't book anything that day because that's going to be a pretty crazy day for you co- cosmically. And I don't know. I find them really fun. I love astrology readings. Um, I wanted to point out too, because I don't like working with, with skeptics very much. Like I, I try not to attract skeptic um, clients and I, and I don't get very many of them, but I can tell when I do have them because the reading is a bit of a slog, but there are mediums out there who love working with skeptics. Like I think of Laura Lynn Jackson, she's like the goop labs medium and she, she's self-taught medium. She's never had a mentor, but she's like, she's always asking to get studied by scientists. Like she wants to be scrutinized and, you know, kind of like testing out her abilities. So she's somebody who I admire because I'm like, I don't know how I would perform or withstand with that kind of skepticism looking at me. Right. Well, I mean, any times that I've done any kind of like situations where it's like purposely being tested, you know, you sometimes have to do like a little uh, test reading or whatever, Um, it's never, in my opinion, as good as it could be, um, because of that pressure factor. So I think if you got used to it, and if you did, if you were tested all the time, I think it would be like, whatever, it would probably be fine. But, um, my, I think I'm too emotional for it. I think I'm too, I don't know, like about the feeling of a reading. So for me to be in like a scientific way to try and prove like I just I I don't know like proving myself to someone just doesn't appeal to me I kind of feel like I just do my thing this is this is 
you know, this is my unique ability. This is my expression of my soul. Like, I don't see it as something that could really be fairly scrutinized Mm -hmm. in a way. Um, I mean, yes and no. I mean, yes, because you can look at pure accuracy. So obviously that can be scrutinized. But the other aspects of it, you know, the other part of it that's, in my opinion, just as important how do you measure something like that? Like someone said to me before, like, how do you explain to someone what, like, what is love? You know, what can you, can you see it? Can you hear it? Can you, you have to feel it. And I kind of feel it's sort of the same along the lines of, of the work that we do. Yeah. I love how they explain that in Goop. I'm not sure if you watched Goop Labs on Netflix. Did you see yeah. it? Yeah. So at the end, like, cause obviously she was like the last person on the show, but that's what one of the other ladies researchers said. It's like, you can't take a transcription of a reading and give it to a skeptic and have it translate because no. much of what people experience in a reading is the clairsentient connection. It is the feels, right? It's like, you could feel the presence of spirit. You can feel the love. You can't put words to it. And that is a big part of the reading. So you're hundred percent right there. But I do have this fantasy that when I'm old, like say I'm like 85 and I'm doing my mediumship, doing my readings. I would love to be at that point. At that point, I envision myself being like not giving any Fs. Like I'm just like not, I'm going to like be living my best life. And I would love at that point to team up with some kind of scientific person who's open spiritually, but wants to work in partnership to elevate this work. And I would love to be tested. I'd love to be like doing all the research. And I, my feeling is like, not so much to be putting it into like an article and being like, here, proof, you know, more like, Um, let's research the mind of a medium. Let's look at the brain of a medium. What is the influence of spirit on our physical body, on our physical health? What is, you know, what is it in us? Is it like mediumship DNA? Is it like, what is it that makes us able to, um, do this and kind of the connection between the mind and the body and the spirit? Um, those kinds of things I'd love to know. Mm. Apparently after 60, you stop caring about that kind of stuff. (laughs) Yeah. I can't wait. Like I literally can't wait. I mean, I guess you could say that I could do that now, but I know myself well enough to know it's going to take a bit longer um, to get there, but I'm I'm envisioning just, yeah. There's a Long Island medium episode where she was hooked up to a brain scan and they looked at the brain function um, because, you know, mediumship happens more on the right side of the brain rather than the left analytical side. So they actually had her brain hooked up to a scanner while she was doing a reading. And then before and after, it was kind of cool. Yeah, they I think that might have been I, I don't know if she was on Dr. Oz or something, but there was some episode that I saw where they did um, look at it while she was doing a reading. And it mimicked the same kind of um, effect as if when you were having a seizure. Oh, yeah. And I have horrific migraines, and um, especially since I've been doing um, this work. And I went to the neurologist, and <laughs> that was an interesting conversation trying to explain like what I do and whatever. <laughs> Uh, and he was like, "Oh yeah," like he was looking at me like, mm-hmm. and he wanted to put me on this anti-seizure medication um to take it daily so that like it would prevent the migraines and I took it for like two days and it was horrible I couldn't I couldn't take it I couldn't handle the side effects but I'm after that I saw that episode about the seizure and I was like oh my gosh I wonder had I taken that medication how much it would have affected the re- my mediumship mm-hmm. like would it have stopped I don't know so weird very crazy. We could do an episode one time on health and mediumship. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. Well, for sure. Literally. Oh, there was something else I was going to say. It was, I was so excited about it when you're talking, but it totally left me. We'll see if it ever comes back. But it was just, um, yeah, I just think that we need to really kind of explore this more. And I think people are actually, walls are coming down now. I saw um, Tony recently on a, a Facebook Live and uh, Anthony was saying to him, Anthony Morocco was saying to him, like, you know, he seems to get a lot of skeptics. I'm interested to talk to him because he seems to get a lot of skeptics that are attracted to work with him. He's like, oh yeah, people literally think that you have time to like Google them before your sessions. And Tony's like, well, before the internet, people accused you of going through their trash. <laughs> 
Right. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. And that's what happened. The second um, example I have as a skeptical reading was, it was actually somebody, I gifted a reading for a charity in town in Squamish and um, somebody bought it. And it was fascinating because it was one of those readings that I was just like, it was just hard for me. It was like, it was fine, but it was like, wow, that took a lot out of me. And then mm-hmm. I went to go message them the recording after, and I got the email address wrong and we'd communicated through social media. And when I went to go say, Hey, I have your wrong email address. I was like, Oh, she blocked me. And I literally thought I did so bad. She blocked me. Yeah. I was like, wow. Okay. And I don't remember how I ended up getting in touch with her. It was a few weeks later, but I said, Hey, I hope I didn't do anything to upset you, but I'm trying to get you the recording from our session. But I noticed that you've blocked me on social media. I hope I didn't do anything to piss you off. Right. And she went back saying, Oh no, 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 no. I, I blocked you before because I didn't want you to cheat. And I was uh-huh. like, Oh, she was skeptical. That's why. Okay. It kind of made total sense after that. Yeah. Right? It, it was fascinating. And we're, we're good buddies now and she still works with me and it's all good and dandy, but yeah, it was, it was interesting. I was like, wow, people actually think that we Google them first or we, oh, we Facebook yeah. them first. people do, people do think that. And I mean, I remember, um, having a discussion about this with, um, someone and, um, I said, you know, oh, sometimes you just wish you could give like an address, you know, or like you wish you could give like the full name, like first, middle, last name or something, you know, sometimes you just crave that just precise, just please, I just want it. And um, the person I was talking to said, yeah, but if you do just wait, that will be the minute you're accused of stalking them on Facebook. You know what I mean? It's like the more it's, it's like you're kind of stuck in this weird place where you want to be accurate and good, but then the more accurate and the, the, you know, the information gets, the more you're under that scrutiny. And I mean, I do find like in the beginning, I was fe- more fearless because I didn't have a reputation to uphold. It was like, oh, like, okay, every experience, let's just go do this. Like, it was just like fly by the seat of my pants. Like, let's just see what happens. And after you start getting a name for yourself and people start, you know, like having good experiences, it creates an expectation. And then that expectation is like, wow, like you were so good for my friend. You better like bring the goods. Like you better be just as good for me. Um, And I wish that I, and I guess that's why it's important to really talk to people about their part of it too. Right. Right. Managing expectations off the bat. That's like in the foundations of my readings. I'm like, okay, let's just manage the expectations right at the beginning. Yeah, like, <laughs> this is my role. This is your role. Uh, don't tell me too much. Like, yeah. yeah, no, I think it's it's important. And one thing I would say to people listening that are doing their own development, um, the most important thing I think is that you don't allow anyone else's um, opinion of you, your work, your readings to define you. You know, you have to within yourself be very grounded and very sure and very much um, your own like friend. You have to be on your own side. You know, you have to really, really take care of yourself because people, whether it's intentional, intentionally, sometimes not, but people can um, really not realize their um, effect that they might have on you. Um, you know, and, and this is such a precious, such a precious, vulnerable type thing, you know, to be, to be doing. So I, I think that just really, you know, realize it's not, it's not ever, it's not ever a good idea to allow someone else to define you, you know, you define yourself. Um, and it doesn't mean that we can't be wrong or that we can't improve. Like you always want to be growing and, and, and looking to expand yourself. But I think your, your well being and your love for yourself has to be constant regardless of what result you get in your readings. Yeah, that's good advice. And you know, my advice around that is like, honestly, people think about us a lot less than we think they do. Like even the example I gave today of the the pet psychic that obviously didn't meet my expectations, but my expectations weren't very high. <laughs> to be yeah. But right. I haven't thought about that reading until this episode. Like I haven't thought about it. I haven't dwelled on it. It is what it is. And I feel like a lot of us ruminate and process our readings to death and the fact is the people who walk away mostly remember the hits and 
or they don't consider it at all. Well, my son, you know, wise as he is, he, he said to me, I was, he asked me, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, Oh, how did, how did that go? How did the group go? And I was like, yeah, it was really, really good. But I'm like, Oh, there's one person like, I gave, you know, all this info about her dad and the rest of the family members were like, yeah, like totally like affected and crying and like it was hitting them. And she was kind of like, I gave all this info and she kind of looked at me and said, yeah, but like, is there something you could tell me that would just like really make me know it's him? Right. I have that. I have that. (laughs) I was was sweating. I was like, what? I was like, um, I just said like 50 things, but you know, and I, I get it. And she said, I know she's like, I, she's like, trust me. Like, I believe you. I'm not, she's like, I'm not criticizing you, but I just like, you know, just something in me I just need. And I'm like, okay, let's keep going. You know, I'm like, let me see what comes. But if I sit here and try and force it, it's not going to come, you know, that's not how it works. So I kind of just had to keep It dips your energy so much too. It's like hard to be super connected, right? it It is hard. And then, so my son was like, well, he's like, you know what? She probably doesn't care. She's probably not thinking about you. So I don't think you should think about her. <laughs> oh, so true. It's so true. And I was like, but, <laughs> you know, it's so hard to be, like, if he's so logical, right? He, we're, my son and I have some things in common, but we're very, like, different in, in that way. He's very logical and very um, matter of fact. So for him, he's just like, well, it's fine. Just keep going. <laughs> And I'm just like, yeah, I guess, but it's, it's sometimes hard to, it's hard to get over sometimes. hundred percent. I totally agree. And I, Mel, I just had that happen last month. Mm-hmm. It was the funniest reading. Cause like she, again, her, her friend had a great experience. She like booked with me and then like she, the only person she wanted to connect with, she never met. And I was like, okay, let's do the best we can. Cause typically the evidence I bring through is personalities. You know what I mean? Like stuff that you would probably recall. Um, and then a whole, like 45 minutes of just like bringing stuff through all understood. And then like, well, is there anything that like you could tell me? So I just know hundred percent for sure that this is them. I was like, wow. Okay. And then I had to like recall all the information I did bring through like debrief. I was like, oh, okay, let's just debrief what came through. That was understood first. Yeah. <laughs> It was fascinating. Really? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. And the the ones where it does come through, where it's like that sort of like, um, you know, really, really like, you know, you, you can't even deny it's like, you know, that's such specific evidence. It's never when someone says, um, can you tell me this? Like, I just need to know. Yeah, it, yeah. Can you tell me something like a specific that is without a doubt? It's like when anyone asks me that, for sure it doesn't come. If somebody's chill and they're allowing the process to unfold, that's when that information will come. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a lesson to anyone who's ever booking your reading. Do for with anyone, do yeah. not show up as a skeptic. You will squash the energy in the reading. Unless I mean, unless you have some like wizard who just like can can totally work is like specializes in working with skeptics. I mean, skeptics can get an okay reading. But I don't believe that any skeptic can really get a fabulous reading. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And that's like what I said to the 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 person who was not believing, even though it was the third year in a row and et cetera, et cetera. I said, you know what? You should go work with Sean because you need like a name. Like you need like something super undeniable. And he gets like undeniable evidence, right? I was like, just you save up your pennies and like get someone like that. If you're truly like seeking the mediumship and you need that kind of, cause Sean's really good at evidence. He's, he's not so much into the messages and stuff, but it's like super strong evidence. I think that's just kind of what they needed. Right. Whereas other people, what they're looking for is that inspiration is okay. that, you know, feeling of connection. Yeah. And it's true. And it's like, you know, different needs for different people. And I, I realize now that it was insanity of me to think that I could fill the needs of every single human in the world, you know? So I now say to people like, listen, I understand that I cannot read for every person in this world. Like I'm not the reader for everybody. Um, So even though I might be a reader for a lot of people, it's not going to be every single one. So let's get going. Let's work together. If I feel I'm not accurate enough, if I feel like we're not connecting, or if you feel that you're like 10 minutes into this and it's not what you, you know, it's not good for you or you're like, "Uh -uh, I don't like this. Please tell me, I'll tell you, we'll like not exchange money and we'll leave like, you know, on good terms. Like there's no, to me, I don't, 
ever want to ever put myself in a position again where I'm draining my energy and feeling like energy sick for days after when I've forced myself to do something that uh, just feels like I'm not the person for them. Yeah, 100%. Um, to, to kind of wrap this up, I really wanted to spend a few minutes focusing because there's a lot of people out there in the spiritual closet who are just like dying to bust out, but are afraid of the skepticism that they're going to face stepping out from their family, from their colleagues, from their friends. Like, what do we have to say to these souls that are just like yearning to live an aligned life and, and be free. But that fear of skepticism is just keeping them stagnant. I mean, I think it's part of the process to, to actually um, believe and trust in yourself enough to be seen as you are and for who you are. And, you know, if, in my opinion, the work that we do, like it's, that's a huge part of who I am. That's a part of me as a person. So if someone doesn't respect that or can at least like tolerate it, Mm -hmm. then that person doesn't really respect or tolerate me, you know? So um, I think it's just like realizing that you'll, you will shock probably some people. You will probably feel it's, it's awkward sometimes. Like it's hard sometimes to bridge that gap. But I think once you become true to yourself and you get used to saying the words, like I have one student um, that I had her write like a hundred times on a piece of paper. I am a medium. I am a medium because she like literally couldn't say it. She couldn't come out. She was like, afraid like very afraid um but once you do it's liberating it's it's like you can be yourself and I think there's such a there's such a joy to being able to do that so I would say you know the right people are gonna love you um and those that don't support you like it doesn't matter you've got it you've got to be I, I'm a big advocate of like being on your own side like just like do you I think that's important yeah. And I would say this from my experience, because I had a lot of skeptics around me, my boss at the time, who I love still, and my husband, yeah. and like even myself being very skeptical of my own abilities, because I'd always been told I was a medium. I didn't actually experience it myself. So I went into this path very skeptical. And I would just say, you're not here to change or convert anyone. And so don't even waste your energy on that. Just if delving into spiritual gifts and really studying mediumship and practicing mediumship lights you up. I promise you, you will get to your deathbed with no regrets. You will look back on your life, thanking yourself for going for it and for doing it in a courageous way. Because if you're at the end of your life alone with your thoughts and you're like, Oh, I wish I pursued this. I wish I pursued this. That's the ultimate no, no. (laughs) right so you have to really decide how you want to live and if you're going to stay small because of what other people might say which you might just be making all this up in your own mind you don't know really what people are going to say it's just not worth the energy to stay that small yeah 100 percent. and i i believe that too that there's there's no um there's no award um at the end for staying in everyone's expectations of you, you know, there's, there's literally no benefit. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about having like enough courage to be true to yourself. And then you'll find as soon as you are, you start finding the right friends, the right colleagues, the right people come into your life that will support that and will, you know, match that, that vibration with you. So it can be the beginning of a really beautiful uh, journey. hundred percent. I love this conversation. Awesome. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for uh, for doing this with me. And we'll post it on both. So this will go up on the Spirit Room and it will go up on Spirit School. And I mean, we'll keep in touch and we'll be back again. 100%. See you guys later. Okay, bye.